What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're here at the beautiful American Quarry. This is the smallest of the three quarries of the PDRA or the Piedmont Diving and Rescue Association. I got Mr. Michael back here. He's my navigational student for today. He's finishing up his navigation or his underwater navigation certification. And if you've never took the navigation course, basically we teach you three different ways to navigate. We teach you line navigation, we teach you natural navigation, and of course we teach you compass navigation. Now when you come out to do your actual dives, we really focus on the compass navigation. And that's why we've come out here to this quarry today because this quarry is more controlled, if you will, than most. It's relatively shallow, it's only about 65 foot deep. But we've got plenty of stuff to see, and it's a consistent temperature top to bottom. Now, if you can't tell, I am in a dry suit today because it's the middle of the winter time. So we're not so much worried about the temperature. But what we are worried about are these little buoys out here. And you'll see all these yellow buoys. And what that does, that gives us some navigational headings or markers that he can practice his navigational skills. And if you want to know more about compass navigation as a whole, I did an entire series of videos a couple of years ago about compass navigation, how you set them up, how you use them, both digital and analog compasses. And I'll link those videos down below for you. Definitely go watch them because I think they'll be very educational for you. But I'm going to take you along today with his dives. And I'm going to kind of show you some of the things that you're going to do in your navigation class, whether it's reciprocal headings, whether it's squares or triangles. And we're even going to see him plot out a course and see if he can follow that course as well to get to his destination. So with that being said, we're going to finish getting geared up. We're going to do a little bit more practice here in the uh, parking lot for him, and then I'm going to let him practice on the surface, and then, of course, we're going to go underwater once he starts plotting a course and see if he can reach his destination. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video, see how well Michael does, and hopefully you guys learn a little bit about navigation as well. One of the great things about the underwater navigation class that I really like is just how challenging this course is. Um, and it doesn't matter where you train. If you train in warm tropical waters out in the ocean somewhere, or you train in our local environment that's very murky, or even in a quarry system like this, it's going to be challenging. You're always going to have variables built in, whether it's waves or currents or limited visibility, or in our case, cold water as this quarry goes, that's always going to be a very challenging course to take, but it's going to make you a much better diver and what we're basically doing here is before we get in the water we're allowing Michael to practice the same skills that he practiced during the academic sessions and the pool sessions we're just doing a basic reciprocal here making sure that he can read the headings of the compasses and we're also going to be looking at what we call reference points and I'm going to stop talking here in just a second and let you guys listen to the conversation between Michael so you understand what a reference point is so you've got a heading to my truck, yep. but underwater you can see that far. And you can see me being a reference point. You're gonna swim to me, I'll step out of your way, you'll pick up the compass again to verify you're still in the right direction, and then continue on to my truck. All right, guys, so we're going to watch that one more time, and I'll kind of explain what we're doing. When we talk about reference points, um, a lot of times uh, divers who are new to underwater navigation is they over-focus on a compass. And what a reference point allows them to do is to get a heading to wherever they're going, and then they... Uh, they kind of look up in advance and see what's in their direct path. If they see something that's in their direct path, they don't have to over-focus on the compass. They can focus on that reference point, swim to that destination, and then pick up the compass to confirm that they're still going in the right direction. Because if we over-focus on the compass, then we're not really going to be going in the right direction because we're going to be afraid that we don't hold it level anytime that we're underwater. We're going to be focused on our buoyancy, our trim, and other other issues other than just where we're headed. I do want to say this. The key to teaching a proper underwater navigation course is being patient with your students. Give them time to learn. Give them time both in the academic and the pool sessions. And even when you go out to do their open water training dives, give them time to actually learn how to use a compass and how to navigate 
you know, with other variables out there because they're going to have to control their trim, their buoyancy, their breathing, the whole nine yards. So just be patient with them and give them time as well. 120 is 280. That's my problem. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, second leg. So what we're doing now is we're allowing Michael to practice his triangle. And typically we always do a 120 turn when we're practicing with students. But we're also going to be showing him how to plot a course. And you kind of heard him say there at the right before he started this part of the training, he said, okay, so I've got a 280 heading and I need to turn that way. And that's what he's doing. He's actually plotting out his course. Um, we don't always do equilateral triangles when we're underwater, but this is a great starting grounds for him. Um, now that he's finished that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the open water portion and yet again I'm going to be patient with him I'm going to allow him time to practice here at the surface so he's going to go out and he's going to do the same three things that I would normally do with any student he's going to practice a reciprocal he's going to practice a square and he's going to practice a, a triangle now I do want to state that this actually it gives them a little bit of stress when they do this. If you've ever tried to swim with scuba gear at the surface, you know that you cannot swim quite as efficiently as what you can under the surface simply because you're dealing with two medians. You're dealing with the median of air and you're dealing with the median of water and you're not going to get um, as much propulsion per kick cycle as what you normally would if you were completely submerged. So this is a great way to transition them in from training on land, that's a controlled environment where they're vertical and they can hold that compass perfectly level, into or transitioning down into the water and giving them a couple of things to practice here. You know, one, he's having to stay balanced. If he gets a little out of balance, that tank's going to shift one way or the other and it's going to throw his kicking off. He's also got to focus on keeping that compass level. Now, typically, depending on where you wear your compass, you may have a little bit of difficulties keeping that compass level. This is where reference points really come in handy. Um, when you're underwater navigating. But like I said, he's also going to have to practice uh, breathing control and everything else. So this is a great way to transition them out of that uh, control area of being on land before you take them completely underwater. And yes, he's done all these skills in a pool, but allowing him to practice before he actually gets completely submerged in an open water environment, making him practice multiple times over and over and over. We're building up consistency in his abilities. And just like the philosophy, the training philosophy of SSI, we're, we're building comfort through repetition. So he's doing it time and time again. Now here in just a minute, I'm, I am going to make him go under and he's going to do about a 50 foot run and he's going to do a square. Now everything he practiced on land is going to be the same thing he practices at the surface and it's going to be the same thing he practices underwater. So we will be making multiple dives. For the purpose of this video, you're just going to see his square underwater. But now that he has successfully completed that, we're going to go ahead and go underwater, and I'm going to let you guys see just how well he can navigate doing a square based off the skills he learned. All right, now for one of his final dives here, we're going to make him go down. I'm going to get him to where he can hold trim and neutral buoyancy at a given depth. And he's going to kind of put everything together that he's learned thus far. So he got his navigational heading to begin with. And this is his first leg here. And a couple of things that he's doing. One, he yes, he is he is following the compass. But you'll see we are swimming up onto a platform underwater. That was his actual reference point. So once he saw that it was in his line of navigation, of course, he didn't really need the compass at that point. He simply swam over to it. Now, he is also having to track how far of a swim that he's going on. There you can see he reconfirmed that. He was going in the right direction after making a 90 degree turn. You'll saw that, or you see that he dropped the compass, looked up to see if there was a reference point. In this situation, there was no reference point. So he is going to have to focus primarily on using the compass. There's no lines that he can follow. There's no other, other references that he can use. So he is going to have to use that compass. Now he is on his third leg. He's went ahead. He's maintaining buoyancy and trim here. He's still at around 20 feet. And he's moving on his third leg. And then for his fourth and final leg, you'll notice that as he turns, 
He will look up, he will see a reference point, and he can actually use that reference point and not have to totally use the compass the entire time. So here he's going, he sees the rocks, you'll see that he's looking up there, he sees a reference point, he basically swims to them, keeping his eyes on where he's going, every now and then just looking down at the compass, making sure that he's still going in the right direction, and of course he can make it back to his exit point. Now. Michael's going to do a few more dives here, but I think as you can see, the underwater navigation class is an excellent class for anyone to take. It builds confidence, it continues your education in the diver, and it just makes you a more well-rounded diver as well. Alright guys, as you can see, Michael earned a certification. He was able to plot a course there at the end and actually he did a perfect square. Uh, he was able to do really good on his triangles and his reciprocals as well. But instead of listening to me, I want you guys to actually listen to Michael and his actual thoughts of the SSI underwater navigation class. So Michael, what would you think about the class, man? It was a great class. It was, uh, it was challenging for me. Definitely challenging, yep. So it's, it's one of those things that you have to you have to keep practicing and working on and you'll progress and get better at it as you go. Right, and I can remember from your pool sessions, you were able to hit those headings just perfect. But pools are kind of like confined environments, obviously where we practice. When we come out here to the open water part, there's so many other things that you've got to multitask at from your buoyancy to watching your breathing to um, you know not running into something obviously. So being able to multitask and do all that you know, you can probably tell them it's not something you're going to do right your very first time. It takes a lot of practice. But, guys, that's it for the underwater navigation class from SSI. Uh, if you got any questions about this course, drop me a comment down below. Make sure you check out those other compass navigation videos I made for you, and I'll link them step one, step two, step three, or video one, two, and three for you because they are very educational and it will help you be a better underwater navigator as well. But guys, if you liked the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a quick little tip on your compass on how you can determine your navigational heading without causing yourself too much stress. To do that, we got to kind of look at what the compass actually does or the features of a compass. I'm going to have a dial card. That's that white card. It's got north, south, east, and west on it. It's got a bunch of navigational numbers. I'm going to have a bezel that's got a bunch of navigational numbers. I'm going to have a lubber line, and then I also have this little view window here on the side. And a lot of people or a lot of divers will actually point the lubber line at the direction they want to go, and then they'll come down here in the view window and they'll try to read that navigational heading. But I'm going to show you from the top just how easy this is to do. The only thing that you really got to focus on is taking that lower line and pointing it in the direction that you want to go. Then you're going to line up the zero of your bezel with the magnetic north of the dial card. So you can see I've got zero and north. And instead of trying to look through the view window here on the side or look down on the compass as well, the only thing that you've got to do is look at the top of the lover line right there. So if you look down, you'll see that we're almost at 48, 49 degrees. But if you look at the lover line and we look here at the top, you'll notice that the lover line and the bezel tells you that we're at about 48 or 49 degrees simply by looking at the bezel and not the dial card. So this is a quick and easy method to determine your navigational heading by simply pointing the lever line the direction you want to go. Line up zero to north, and then whatever that navigational heading on your bezel is here, that is your underwater navigational heading. And it doesn't really matter once it's locked in what you do. So if I turn the compass, I'm teaching a class or something, and I can say, hey, what was our navigational heading? I don't even have to be lined up at that point because it's permanently locked in to my bezel as well. So that's a neat little compass trick that might help you out in the future.